Greetings everyone, my name is Dr. Anshul Kataria and I'm a third year radiology resident from Maharishi Markan Deshur Institute of Medical Sciences and Research, Mulana. So today our topic of discussion is Ewing sarcoma of the chest wall and let's begin. Ewing sarcoma of the chest wall or Ewing sarcomas are second most common malignant primary bone tumors of the childhood after osteosarcoma. It is a primitive primary malignant tumor of the bone which derives the tumor cells from the connective tissue framework of the bone marrow. The typically involved age group is from 10 to 25 years of age with peak incidence rising at around 15 years of age. Most frequently involved bones are the long tubular bones and then the flat bones. This is a pictorial representation of the typically involved bones that are seen in the purple color followed by the light blue colored bones that are the less typical sites of involvement. So we see that the female is the most commonly involved bone followed by tibia, fibula and humerus. Diaphysis is a classical location for these tumors. Metaphysis and metadiaphysial region may be involved. Now how does Ewing sarcoma appear on radiographic imaging? Now Ewing sarcoma will present as moth-eaten, destructive, permeative lucent lesions in the shaft of the long bones, a delicate laminated onion skin or onion peel periosteal response is noted in 25 to 50 percent of the cases. Now the onion skin or onion peel appearance is a very characteristic sign of Ewing sarcoma followed by cortical saucerization which is an early and also a characteristic sign. So these two signs we need to remember one is the onion peel appearance or the periosteal reaction the other is a cortical saucerization. Now mixed lytic and spirotic pattern is most commonly seen in tubular bones. Purely lytic regions are rarely seen. On CT scan we will typically see an ill-defined heterogeneous attenuation lesion with multiple areas of cystic degeneration. Solid components will demonstrate enhancement following the administration of contrast. Calcification is uncommon and onion peel appearance may or may not be seen as we've discussed it's seen in only 25 to 50 percent of the cases. So this is an image of an onion which is cut into half to show us the laminated appearance and this is exactly what we will see in a radiographic imaging. Now if you focus on the periosteal reaction we will notice that there are lines. So those lines are laminated appearance of the periosteal reaction and that is known as onion peel or onion skin re uh, reaction. Then we'll see cortical saucerization. Saucerization is more like indent indentation or in, uh, a saucer appearance of the bone. So that is the saucerization. These two features we need to remember. Now imaging findings in Ewing sarcoma of the chest wall. Let's begin the main uh, part of our discussion. Ewing sarcoma of the chest wall are malignant tumors affecting children and young adults as discussed from tw uh, 10 to 25 years of age originating either from the osseous structures or from the soft tissue of the chest wall. Originally, a small round blue cell tumor of the soft tissues of the chest was described and came to be known as the Askin tumor or peripheral primitive neuroectodermal tumor. All these entities are now thought to belong to the same tumor family and they refer to as Ewing sarcoma family of tumors. Now, how will the patient present to us in an OPD? The patient will present with a warm soft tissue mass which is often painful and slowly growing. So now once we have a suspicion of Ewing sarcoma based on the age of the patient, the presentation of the patient, we will advise an x-ray chest followed by a CCT thorax. So next we will see a case of a 12 year old female who presented in the OPD with a progressively increasing swelling involving the right lateral chest wall for approximately 3 months. There was no history of chest pain, cuff or breathlessness, ruling out the other pathologies. On examination, the swelling was relatively well defined, centered in the right lower chest wall and it was firm in consistency. So let's see what we found out in the x-ray. In the x-ray, uh, we saw an ill-defined contour lytic area involving the lateral aspect of the ninth rib with adjacent soft tissue component. So, if you notice on the right lower side, you will see a lytic area all right, involving the ninth rib. Now, then we further advised her for CCT uh, chest and we saw ill-defined heterogeneous expansile lesion uh, involving the adjacent soft tissue component with hypodense areas within it. So, the hypodense areas that you see are the necrotic areas involving the right lateral chest wall. 
with cortical erosion and destruction of the ninth rib. Laterally, the lesion is also seen infiltrating the lateral chest wall muscles and subcutaneous tissue. So these were the axial sections. Now let's see the coronal section. In the coronal section, if you see that the lesion is so large enough that one, it is causing cortical destruction of the ninth rib. Also, it is causing the downward shift of the right hemidiaphragm, causing a scalloping of the liver surface. However, there is no infiltration that is noted in the liver and the flat pains with the liver are focally indistinct. The lesion is also infiltrating into the parietal and the visceral pleura. So here we see, now the another way to note down that which bones are involved, we, we can see the 3D reconstruction from the CT that we have just acquired. So that is also one way to uh, say which rib or ribs are involved. After the CT scan was done, biopsy was taken from the mass and we obtained a malignant small brown cell tumor, which further confirmed the diagnosis of Ewing sarcoma of the chest wall. Now we'll see another case of an adolescent male presenting with a painful swelling on the right side of the chest wall. The patient also underwent a CT scan to show us a large heterogeneous non-enhancing soft tissue mass centered around the posterior aspect of the right 11th rib. Again, you see that there are areas, the hypodense areas. All right, so this is another case that we see. So let's discuss what you just uh, uh, seen in our scans. Malignant tumors affecting children and young adults. So this is the second most common malignant tumor after osteosarcoma to affect the children and the young adults from 10 to 25 years of age. They originate either from the osseous structures or from the soft tissue of the chest wall. Now, small round blue cell tumor is included in Ewing sarcoma family of tumors along with askin tumor, as we've already discussed, or peripherally primitive neuroectodermal tumors. They are highly aggressive malignant tumors and present with large intrathoracic as well as a small extrathoracic component like we've seen in our previous scan in the first case that we saw that it was also involved with the soft tissue component of the cell and it was infiltrating into the lateral chest wall muscles and the subcutaneous tissue. All right, so Ewing sarcoma family of tumors shares uh, common cytogenic and microscopic features like we saw in histopathology. They're small round cell malignant tumors. On imaging, these tumors are ill-defined with heterogeneous attenuation and multiple areas of cystic degeneration is seen. Treatment includes surgical, uh, surgical resection with new adjuvant uh, chemotherapy. The strongest predictive outcome is the presence or development of distinct metastasis. These are my references. Thank you so much for your attention. Goodbye.